but we come to the western side of Iceland and to this lighthouse that you just saw and these amazing cliffs and what we're doing is we're planning for the aurora later tonight because it looks like it's going to clear up and we're going to get some amazing northern light activity and luckily for me I'm here with Mass Peter Iverson and he is an amazing aurora photographer um, take a look at his YouTube channel and his Instagram account he's done some stunning images I'm trying to use around about one second but I'm also going to experiment with longer exposures as well because tonight when I'm here and the northern lights hopefully are above then I'm going to be exposing at much longer exposures so I want to see what that looks like when I do it so that I can try and then get the best exposure in the dark when it's going to be less easy to experiment with. We're down at this beach, which is amazing, mass, which fan fantastic place. So what, one of the things um, is I was speaking earlier about just taking images of the aurora, and it'd be really interesting to understand why you take pictures of the aurora. Well, first of all, why not? <laughs> they are hugely impressive. Uh, they're so beautiful. Um, yeah, like I guess like people go and take pictures of a, a lion. I, I yeah. like taking pictures of the aurora. Yeah, there's no like deeper meaning yeah. to it. It's just like it's fascinating. Yeah, it's fascinating, and you can create stunning images, can't you? So, yeah. we, we, you, you've given me some top tips because I'm fairly new to this. I've not done a lot of aurora photography because where I live, there's there's nothing. I've not been to locations where I've been lucky enough to get it. Well, last time I came to Iceland, we had no luck. But what what are your sort of three top tips for anybody looking to take any shots? Like well, me. <laughs> yeah, well, first off, you need the proper gear, like uh, a sturdy tripod, and I mean a sturdy tripod, not those flimsy ones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you need uh, a, a proper camera, and preferably full frame, as to be yeah. able to handle the higher ISO. Yeah, because I'm struggling a little bit with my Fuji X-T2, because my Nikon D810 has got some funny things going on. So full frame is really important. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, of course, then also a, a fast lens preferably uh, 2.8 and below yeah. and also a fairly wide lens yeah. so you can get the entire scene yeah. and the auroras within the frame yeah and that, I, that's another thing that I, I was really surprised about because what I the ones that I am shooting on my Fuji I'm putting it at 10 millimeters which is equivalent to like 15 millimeter lens and it, I almost want to go wider it's like you, you there's not, not too wide you can't be too wide can you no almost not like no. I, I am shooting at a 20 millimeter and yeah more than often i really feel that it's it's way too uh, na narrow yeah yeah so any any other tips yeah well of course uh, you need to be aware of like the weather like if there's clouds yeah. of course uh, you can't see the auroras a few clouds can hugely yeah. benefit your pictures uh, because they create like a really great depth in the pictures yeah, yeah, and sure. show how huge the yeah. auroras can be yeah. when they fill up the sky so in general, be aware of the weather, and uh, that also comes to when it comes to your clothing. Yeah. You are probably all out night. On Freezing, a yeah. Frosty night, really yeah. Really cold. The it night, can get it? very, yeah, very cold. Yeah. So bring proper, proper like footwear, so you don't freeze your feet yeah. and your head yeah, and sure, sure. tire your body. Yeah. Good, good. So that, so that's great. And you've got some. Um, you got a video that you're doing specifically on the Aurora that you're going to re release at the end of your Iceland series, haven't you? Yeah, it's going to be some part of my Iceland series at some point, yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant, okay. Well, thanks. I, I think, I'm sure I'll have some other questions later on, but, you know, thanks a lot for that. I think it's still not clearing behind us, is it? Nope. No, no. Nope. We're waiting for it to clear behind us there, see if we can get a good shot of the, of the mountains behind us, but it's blue sky in that direction and fog in that direction, so... <laughs> See what we get. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot. I completely forgot to talk about the composition. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that later. So, what's the third part of the three tips that you give somebody um, who wants to do Aurora? Well, the third tip is that you have to think about your composition. Like just yeah. aiming the camera towards the sky. Yeah. Well, the Auroras are, of course, beautiful. But if you want a complete photo, you really need to think about your composition. Yeah. It's like the foreground, mid-ground, and the auroras as the backgrounds. Leading lines, focal points, all those things. If you want a complete photo, you have to think about your composition. Yeah, and that's, I think that's what we, we, we were doing 
today, wasn't it? Just looking for those compositions to be able to take the Aurora later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, good. Okay. Well, fingers crossed. Hope we get some good Aurora. Okay, it's so dark, obviously, and you probably can't see any of this. <laughs> so um, I'm sorry about that. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the um, lighthouse, the lighthouse beam. And I've going back to where I was earlier, which is this path that's leading down to the lighthouse. And I'm also going to try a selfie with my head torch. Wish me luck. and a bit of foreground so aurora update is still looking good it's about 1 a.m and i've lost mass don't know where he is oh maybe that's him over there okay so i'm doing a time lapse again at the moment and it's interesting how the aurora just changes so much so one point it can be really fantastic and then the next minute it can just disappear just to watch it dance in the sky is really spectacular. I definitely recommend that if you do take the Aurora that you have um, a wide angle lens. I always want to be wider and wider and wider. I wish I had like a fisheye lens really because he really goes right up into the sky and to get those lines would look fantastic if I had a fisheye. I'd also um, make sure that you get some foreground that can, can either reflect the Aurora or has got something, a leading line that's really definite, that really picks up in low light. And we're lucky that we've got a moon that's behind us whilst we're shooting the aurora, which looks really fantastic. But anyway, I'm gonna leave you now. I'm gonna carry on doing this. Last day, that's not good at all, is it? <laughs> so we're down by another glacier today. We've just flown the drones over it. It just looks absolutely amazing. And we are going to probably just try and find some compositions down by the lake here. The light's just a bit hazy today, so there's not as much sun, but there's still amazing amount of things to photograph in Iceland as you can see behind me, which is stunning, so amazing. So, I wanted to talk a little bit about photographing a new location and one as stunning as Iceland, because it's quite interesting really that you can go to a location like this, and I, I've done it, I've been here, I, I came here and quite a long time ago now, but for two weeks, and I got some great shots, but I think then my photography wasn't at the level it probably is now. I, I wasn't as experienced a landscape photographer. And I went around the island and took lots and lots of what I would term in snaps. Some of them turned out well, but a lot of them were just records of the location. Now I'm not saying they weren't good records, I think they were, I'm quite pleased with them. They, they, they tell the story for me of that trip and um, with my wife, which was fantastic. It was actually before we had kids. So, so I remember it really fondly. Does that sound bad, before we had kids? Anyway, so, but 
When you come and you come on a dedicated photography trip to a location like this, you've got to be so careful when you're driving down not to keep stopping and taking a picture and stopping and taking a picture and stopping and taking a picture. Because if you do that, you won't get great results. You've got to dedicate time to a location. You really, especially when you haven't scouted that location before, maybe go back to the same location twice. Because if you don't dedicate that time to the location, you just think, you're going to keep driving around and, and, and getting to all the and ticking off all the spots you want to go to, then you'll end up getting no great, amazing shots. It was a really good idea this morning, really. We, we were driving here and the, the sort of blue hour was amazing, and we thought, oh, should we stop? Should we not? We were going to go to the ice um, beach, and we, and we decided we didn't have time, so we came here. And we haven't stopped at We've stopped at one waterfall just quickly to have a look at it. So, but we've passed so many. And it's all about dedicating quality time. It's a little bit when you go to one location and not taking lots of shots. It's the same here. You need to go to Iceland and not go to multiple locations. But it is amazing. I love it so much. And I've had such a great short trip here. I'll definitely be back. and. And, and, and find some new locations to shoot. Anyway, I think I'm sat in the middle of the lagoon. Time goes by, yeah, you and I are running out, running out. Time goes by, I'll change my mind about you and I. So would you stay for a minute so I can be brave? Let me catch my breath. Now I can feel what I'm saying. I'm letting you know this heart's on the edge. Okay, so we, on our way back to Reykjavik, we've come to the area around Skogafoss. But rather than go to Skogafoss, we've turned right and come to this amazing waterfall here, which really is stunning and very different than Skogafoss, which is super wide, this is just skinny. But it produces a great sort of leading line with this, with this river here. And it's great, but today it's really sunny, and unfortunately with the sun, it's making it very difficult to, to get a great shot. But if I ever come back here, then I know I've got a good composition. And I'm definitely gonna come back to Iceland. There's no doubt about that. Oh, what an amazing time I've had in Iceland. Thanks ever so much for watching this episode. And if you did, then the other episodes as well. I've had such an amazing time shooting here. And it's such a varied landscape. I just can't believe all the different things that I've seen with Whoa, fancy seeing you here. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? No, seriously though, Mass has been an amazing companion and, and, and tour guide. Because <laughs> he's been here for six, six weeks, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's been absolutely great. So thanks a lot, Mass, for that. Um, and take a look at his videos. He's, he's got some videos out probably in April, are they? Yeah. April, yeah. 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 And um, yeah, thanks ever so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I really appreciate if you, if you would subscribe below if you're not already subscribed, but if not, then that's fine as well. Until next Sunday, bye.